All right, welcome back everybody. I'm Jeremy Veldman and I'm gonna be talking a lot about solar eclipses in the upcoming videos. We got two of them coming up in the next year. In fact, uh, it's hard to believe, but we're less than a year away from the next total solar eclipse, April 8, 2024. Last one, of course, occurred on August 21, 2017. Many of you probably saw it and here we are, less than a year away from April 8, 2024, the next one. But actually you don't have to wait that long. We've got another solar eclipse coming this fall October 14, 2023. So we're six months away from that one. Now, it's not a total solar eclipse, so you won't see the corona. It's an annular eclipse. I'll explain the difference, but it still may be worth checking out. So again, we have um, two solar eclipses coming up in the next year. The big one, of course, April 8, 2024. That's the one you're going to want to mark your calendar for and make every effort to get into this narrow band here called the path of totality. I live right here in Memphis, Tennessee, so it's a short drive for me. Again, assuming it's clear, and we're going to be watching weather very closely, of course, as we get closer. But there's another an uh, eclipse coming in the fall, and that's an annular solar eclipse, October 14, 2023. And it's pretty interesting where this one is coming, the, the path of this eclipse, and also the time that it's occurring. That's really what I wanted to highlight here. So you can see here part of the path of totality and where it crosses over in Texas. Again, San Antonio, Midland, Albuquerque, New Mexico, right on the center line. Very interesting, as well as some really spectacular territory in southern Utah. Now, again, a solar eclipse occurs when you have a unique alignment of the sun, moon, and earth. In astronomical terms, it's called syzygy. And, but it's really an alignment of the sun, the moon, and you, because you need to make an effort to get into this narrow band called the path of totality if you want to see and experience the, the totality of the eclipse. Now, this diagram is not necessarily the best diagram to show the scale. No, it's, it's not. It's a poor diagram. It's a good diagram for showing the alignment, but a very poor diagram for showing the relative sizes of the Earth and the moon in space. And for that reason, this video might be a little bit better. You can see just how far away the moon is from the Earth and just how small they are compared to their, their relative distances. Also, the plane of the moon's orbit is tilted at a five degree angle with respect to the plane of the moon of the Earth's orbit around the sun, which is why we don't get eclipses every full and new moon. But you can see just how far away and just how narrow that shadow is when the eclipses occur, which is why it's over such a small part of the daytime side of the, of the Earth during totality, during an eclipse. So why do eclipses happen? Um, again, you need a couple of things to, to line up here. First of all, the, the moon needs to be in its new moon phase, meaning it's between the Earth and the sun. So basically we're starting a new lunar, lunar cycle. So that needs to occur in order to have a, a solar eclipse. The other thing is you need to have an alignment of nodes. Now, what is that? Again, the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun is tilted at a five degree angle with respect to the plane of the moon's orbit around the Earth. And where those two planes intersect are called nodes. And most of the time they don't line up, which is why we see a full moon and we don't see a new moon. But every once in a while you get an alignment of nodes that uh, corresponds with a new moon. And when that happens, we get solar eclipse. Now, the other thing is the orbit of the moon around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It's slightly elliptical. So there are times when the moon is closer to Earth, perigee, and also further away from the Earth, apogee. So when the moon is at perigee and you have an alignment of nodes and a new moon phase, you have a total solar eclipse like the one we're going to see on April 8 next year. However, when the moon is at apogee, it doesn't completely cover the moon's disk, and you get what's called an annular eclipse. That's what we're going to see on October 14 of this year, 2023. So again, this diagram maybe shows a little better. Again, not to scale, but you can see here, if the moon is further out, then the umbral shadow, the deepest part of the moon's shadow, doesn't reach Earth completely. It, um, and then you have this anti-umbra shadow, which is where you want to be if you want to see the annulus or the ring. And you'll see something like this where the, again, the moon further out at apogee doesn't completely cover the disk of the sun. And then you get this annulus or ring. Some people call it a ring of fire around the dark moon. 
And hence the term, that's why they call it an annular eclipse. It's not a total solar eclipse. Now, experientially, if you were to rank the three types of solar eclipses, a partial, an annular, and a total, on a scale of one to 10, a partial would be a three, an annular would be a seven. And in the words of Fred Espinach, the famous astrophysicist, Mr. Eclipse, a total would be a 10 million. So there's no comparison. If you, can, if you have to pick one, go for April 8, 2024. However, an annular still might be interesting. And notice the path that the annular eclipse October 14, 2023 takes through Texas, New Mexico, and parts of Southern Utah. And look at how many national parks and scenic areas are in the path of this annular eclipse. Also, October 14 is on a Saturday. It's the middle of the month. A lot of kids are on fall break. I know my kids are on fall break. So you might have the opportunity to have a fall break vacation, maybe a long weekend, and then be in some of the most spectacular scenery in the country and see a, an annular eclipse at the same time. The other thing is you're past the heat of summer and you're typically before the, the, the cold of winter. Now it can still be warm in some of these areas in October, but at least you don't have July and, and the oppressive heat of July and August. So now let's look at New Mexico here. We're kind of zooming in on the totality path as it goes through New Mexico. Look at the areas that are in the path of totality for the annular eclipse on October 14. Roswell, New Mexico, that'd be an interesting vacation. They stay, uh, they looks like they have about four and a half minutes, four minutes and 46 seconds of duration during the annulus part of the eclipse. Albuquerque is really interesting. And I'll talk about that in a second. Also Santa Fe, Gallup, and some of these other areas here. But again, Albuquerque is right on the center line. You get about four minutes and 44 seconds of duration during the annulus or uh, during totality. Now there's an event coming up. Some of you may have gone to this. I haven't gone yet, but it's Balloon Fiesta. It's a one week event. And the last two days occur over the weekend of this annular eclipse. In fact, if you look at their schedule on uh, Saturday, October 14, they actually have a viewing for the annular solar eclipse at 9.15 in the morning. And that follows the, the chainsaw carving exhibition, which seems appropriate enough since the previous day is Friday, October the 13th, Friday the 13th. But anyway, I digress. You can get more information about this on their website. I'll just pull it up here a second for reference. Again, go to balloonfiesta.com. And this looks like a really cool event, pretty spectacular. Again, I've never been, and it would be interesting to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Now, I have talked to some of my colleagues who have gone to this, and one person in particular said, you know, it's very crowded. About 100,000 people descend on this area every year. So you may not get lodging in Albuquerque, and if you do, you may have to pay a premium for it. I've tried to book two Airbnbs, already been declined twice. Obviously, they've got wind of this event and they're waiting till you get closer to the date and probably jack their prices up. So you may have to stay an hour away in Santa Fe, may have to fly into Denver, Colorado, probably not going to get a rental car in Albuquerque if you decide to fly in, rent a car and then go to this. So logistically speaking, it's a challenge. Also, you and 100,000 other people have kind of thought of the same idea. So, um, yeah. <laughs> It could be, you know, it could be a bit of a challenge to to pull this off. So I'm not exactly sure this will be the most stress-free way to view an annular eclipse, but looks like a spectacular event, and they do have an event scheduled for it. Now, let's look at Utah here, and, and I have been to this part of the country several times, and I think that the road from Blanding to Torrey, that 200-mile stretch to the Glen, Glen Canyon Dam is maybe the most spectacular road I've ever been on in the country. I mean, it's just absolutely breathtaking scenery as far as the eye can see. Not often you can drive for hundreds of miles and just see cliffs and canyons and, and desolation and just unimaginable scenery. And again, this is right in the, the zone of totality for this eclipse. In fact, Torrey, which is um, near the center line here in Capitol Reef, Reef National Park, it's about four and a half minutes of uh, duration during annularity. So 
it would be again another unique opportunity to have a really beautiful spot for a vacation and see an annual eclipse. The other thing is you get some of the darkest skies anywhere in the country. So maybe you get there a day or two early, do some stargazing, um, and then check out the annular eclipse Saturday morning, October 14. So that does look somewhat interesting. Now, let me just point you to a couple of websites here. The best, the best website I found, there's several of them out there, but uh, I like mystereclipse.com if you want to get information on eclipses, and he just has a wealth of information. Again, this is Fred Espinox website. He's got books, he's got atlases, he's got links to get glasses, he's got links on how to photograph eclipses, and just anything you want to know. And he's he's got details on every eclipse going forward in time, going back in time. So if you go to mystereclipse.com, you click on this link right here, Solar Eclipse Preview 2011 to 2030. You can actually scroll down and pick the eclipse, you know, that you want. In this particular case, October 14, 2023, it's an annular eclipse. If we click on that, then we can, there's a link here for a Google map of the, of the path of annularity, path of to, uh, totality. So if we zoom in here, we can kind of see what parts of the country that this eclipse goes through. And again, I showed you you know, the parts of Texas and into New Mexico. So let's just say hypothetically that you wanted to shoot for Albuquerque and the balloon fiesta. So I could click here and it will bring up all the relevant information. So I'll, I know right, in, right near Albuquerque on the center line, I got four minutes and 50 seconds of annularity uh, during of, of duration during annularity. I can see when the partial phase begins. Again, this is universal time, so you got to back out five or six hours. This is mountain time, so I think you have to back out six hours. So 15 minus six would be nine. So I guess it would be 9 13 in the morning. And then uh, if you back out six from 16, you're at 10 30 is when is when annularity the uh the total phase, if you will, of the of, of annularity begins, and then it ends at uh, sixteen thirty nine. So you get all the relevant information. Again, this is all in universal time, so make sure you adjust it for whatever time zone you're in. In this particular case, it would be Mountain Time for Albuquerque, I believe. But double check that. And again, if I wanted to go, I can see the details. Of where it goes in in um, Utah as well, and here you can see the road from Blanding to Torrey through the Glen Canyon up to Capitol Reef National Park. So this would be another spectacular spot to see it. And I can get all the relevant information. Let's say I wanted to park at Torrey. Again, 1509 is when the partial phase begins. Back out six hours. That's about 1109 in the morning. The annularity. Our totality would be again 1627. So that's what 1227. And then um it ends at uh 1231 if you if you if you adjust for mountain time. And then you can see where it goes here if you were to get into uh Nevada, Ely, Nevada might be a spot as well that we're we're targeting. And you can actually go out uh through Nevada. And then out to Oregon, including parts of the Oregon coast. So now obviously weather is going to be a factor. We'll talk about that a little bit more detail also. But mystereclipse.com, just a great website to get a wealth of information. Now, an annular eclipse, there will never be an opportunity to view it naked eye, like during a total eclipse during totality. So you'll always need eye protection, whether it's solar eclipse glasses. And we got some other options too. I'll talk in more detail in a future video about this, but eclipseglasses.com is a website you can go to to order the eclipse glasses. And that's by American Paper Optics. And you can see here, um, let me unshare my screen. Um, some of the eclipse glasses they made for us for the last eclipse. And they're actually working on an updated order for us this year, but pretty simple. You put them on. And I can actually look at the sun now and my eyes are protected. So these are great. And now is a good time to get these. And again, we've got an updated order 
Let me just kind of show you here. Now, another option, um, and I like this actually a little better, are these sun oculars. And these are solar filtered binoculars. You can order these. I'll show you where you can get these. But these are really cool. Again, I can look directly at the sun with these. And the thing I like about the binoculars is it magnifies the disk of the sun so I can see more detail. And I actually looked at the sun this morning with these and you can see sunspots. The sun is getting pretty active now. We're, we're near solar maxima, give or take. So these are great for observing uh, the partial phases of a solar eclipse and also an annular eclipse. You know, we get toward annularity and you wanna see the ring. The, the Lunt binoculars are fantastic. So let me give you some details on that here. Um, again, go to solareclipseclasses.com or eclipseclasses.com. That's the website if you want to order solar eclipse glasses. We've got an order coming in. If you're local to Memphis and you attend one of our events live, you can get these for free. These will be coming in you know, mid to late June or so this year. And as we spread the word about the eclipse coming up, the eclipse is coming up, then we'll, we'll have the glasses available as well. And I just showed you the sun oculars by Lunt. Uh, you go to americaneclipse.com. You can order them there for about 129 bucks a pair. They're worth it. You don't just use them for the eclipse. Again, you can use these uh, throughout the year if you want. If you just want to take a look at the sun and see if there's you know sunspots or anything going on. So these are pretty cool, but obviously they're great for the eclipse as well. And here are the website links, mystereclipse.com, EclipseWise, Great American Eclipse. In fact, I'll show you that website here in a minute as we're wrapping up. So this is Michael Zeiler's website. And again, this just has a bunch of information on the upcoming annular in the fall and total next spring, April the 8th. And it's got detailed maps of every state where the path of totality goes through as well as duration. You can order atlases, you can order books. They've got a store here. You can order just a wealth of things, whether it's the eclipse classes, the eclipse classes. Uh, you can get t-shirts, you can get maps. They've got a solar app that I'm getting ready to check out. A lot of people will be photographing the eclipse with their, with their smartphone. I'll do a future video on that. And just any, any eclipse swag that you wanna order, so. Anyway, just want to shoot this quick video. April 8, 2024, obviously circle that date on your calendar. Make every effort to get into the path of totality. It's this one right here. But don't rule out the annular either. I haven't made final plans yet, but this one looks interesting because of the time that it's occurring on a Saturday, middle of, the, of October, and some of the parts of the country that it's going through. So now if you don't want to travel, depending on where you are, if, even if you're outside of the zone of totality, you will see a partial eclipse. So even if you don't want to make the effort to see the annular, the actual ring, you know, check out your area and see what percentage of the sun's disk is going to be eclipsed during a partial eclipse. That can be pretty spectacular too. And again, something like the, the Lunt sunoculars would be great for that or the solar eclipse glasses. Those would also be great for that as well, but you're going to need eye protection of some kind. So anyway, we'll talk more about that in a future video. Just want to make you aware of October 14, 2023 annular eclipse and be planning for that one as well. That one looks interesting. Jeremy Veldman, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.